Hello everyone and welcome back to another Midweek Musings. Now it has been such a long time since we've done one of these and I've really missed doing them. But somebody contacted us and said to us, Nicky, would you like to bring back the Musings and we'll sponsor it? And I said, absolutely, absolutely we would because we love the Musings. Um, who is this person that wanted the Musings back so badly you asked? Well, I'll tell you who it is. It's a company called Final Runner. Final Runner is a betting game. It's a bit like let's say the fortnight of betting games, it's last man standing. So what you do is you pick a team. Um, so everyone enters, so it's, there's two competitions running at the moment. We're gonna be entering as well, so try and beat us. So it's five pounds to enter, 10 pounds to enter. You've probably played this before with your friends, right? So you pick a team. If your team wins, you progress to the next round. It's as simple as that. You keep on picking teams, you keep on winning, you keep on progressing to the next round. You cannot pick the same team twice. Um, and that's it really. If you're the last one standing, you win the whole pot. Go and enter. As I said, we're entering. I know the guys over at Hammers Chat are entering. Uh, so try and beat us, see if you can beat us. Go and show these guys some love. It's a bit of fun. You must be 18 plus. Gamble responsibly, please. If you can't afford it, don't do it. It's as simple as that, you know. Only gamble what you can afford. Um, it's a bit of fun. Uh, we'll be participating. But these guys have kindly sponsored this video. And this is the, the, the type of videos we need to get more content running on this channel. Um, and these guys have kindly stepped up and give us some money. We need computers fixed in, we need this, we need that. Uh, these guys have done it. Um, you know, if, you, if you're into the competition, there'll be future collaborations and they'll be paying us um, to create more content. And that's what you want, that's what you guys want. Um, as I said, it's a bit of fun. If you enter, if you enter, they have promised us that they're going to enter like a free roll tournament, like later on down the line. So um, yeah, go show them guys some love. We, this is the show where we pick you three questions. I have my little say, then I'll read out you guys say what you said on Twitter. Um, if you want to get involved, look out for these posts. Uh, we will be pinning them and promoting them. Um, and we read out your comments uh, when you get involved in these. So question number one, this is some quite profound ones. We haven't done this in a while, so there's some quite profound ones this week. Um, it's not just the usual, where will we finish, blah, blah, blah. These are quite profound, right? So number one, Jim White has this week again stirred controversy amongst West Ham fans by claiming there was an outcry over Sue Fowl signing. What do you think is the reason that he's not, um, con that he's constantly not giving the correct facts? Now, what I say about this is, I cover West Ham content. I look on social media, I look and speak to so many fans. I don't remember one fan upset with the signing of Sufal. In fact, people were quite pleased that we'd signed for Sufal because we'd sold Ngakia the year before, who, who looked like he was gonna be um, someone that might step in. He left on a free. We got Ben Johnson. We had Ryan Fredericks, who wasn't in the best of form, and fall back to the most um, important position in football. I've seen it many, many times. Like the modern game is played directly through fullbacks. Nobody cared how much he costs. We just wanted him to be good. That's 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 as simple as that. And the only reason people were like out quiet, it wasn't because of its of his fee. It's like Jim White made it sound like we was moaning because he only cost five million. West Ham can not give a shit about that. We got a moaning Messi only cost five million. That's a ridiculous statement to make. What we was moaning about is that we were selling forward players and we was buying defensive players without looking at forwards. We haven't signed a forward all summer. In fact, we've let more, uh, summer and winter actually, in fact, we've let more forwards go. That, and, and this, is, this is what I'm saying. Why, the, well, the question is, why does he keep on talking these facts? I'll tell you why he keeps on talking these facts. One, he likes David Sullivan. That's, that's, you know, he's a friend of his, that's, that's a fact. Um, he likes the information and he likes to, too, and I think what is most importantly is he likes to stir controversy. They've been talking about West Ham a lot lately because they know it gets under our skin. The more times he talks about it, the more times he winds you up, which I think is quite sad, actually, um, but that's the way the media works, I'm afraid. Um, the more he winds us up, the more free advertising, the more you know, um, the more people call in, the more people interact, the more people have eyes on Jim White and TalkSport. And that's, you know, the, the guy that's, that, that runs TalkSport is a West Ham fan, which is, 
that's the way the media works. That's the way this business works. That's the you want eyes on your product, and unfortunately, they've found a niche where they can get eyes on their product, um, and that's by winding us up, which I think is poor. I think Jim White is a poor representative. I think you know he, he tries to pick people apart. I can tell you now for for now, if I ever went on Talksport, which I wouldn't, by the way, because I'm I'm quite um, annoyed with Talksport. I've been on there before, but I won't go back on there over the way they're, they're sort of creating this narrative. I tear Jim White and Simon Jordan apart. I tear them to pieces. But anyway, um, that's my say. Let's get to your say, um, because that's the most important thing. Uh, Mark Sherman Brown says, I didn't hear people moaning about Sufal. Uh, I heard people saying we needed a strike up and not an outcry. Jim White is stirring it and trying to steer the conversation in the favour of GSB. That's the thing, the more he, he talks about these things, the more the outside fans think, oh, what a bunch of tossers they are. You know what I mean? And that's what winds me up about it because they still don't understand what we're moaning about. Uh, Bob, uh, GSB, Addy, WHU says, um, it'll probably be Sullivan in his ear saying they don't have a clue. They'll moan when we signed him now, they'll love him. Uh, 97 M R A L I G says, uh, he must be very good friends with the owners, allegedly, in inverted commas, if you know what I mean. Um, Warwick Bet says, more views and clicks. Even if the fans disagree, they share the clip getting more views. The next show will get more people trying to call in. They care about numbers and not how they get them. Absolutely. Uh, Walt Hogg says, it says See, that's the thing, that's why I should watch fan channels. If I cared about numbers, I'd chin on, and then everyone would be watching. Um, Walt Hogg says, we're easy targets and we'll bite. Says, uh, I think he's right. Um, I'm definitely an easy target. Uh, Finn Hammer says, uh, see, I think he's just now realized that ticking us off gets him more coverage and views. Just doing it for reason. This is the, the, the common theme here. Uh, just doing it for reason. That he doesn't, that he isn't the brightest star in the sky. Uh, Gavin O'Flynn said he knows it'll be range fans and they'll get extra texts and phone calls. This is what I'm saying. There's a there's a like a, a little theme building up here. It's what talk shite do, get people angry and ring in. That's what revenue stream people simply need to turn it off. 90% is simply made up of crap talking up the big six. Like Sky. Uh, because, uh, Stevie Smith says, Hornchurch Hammer says, because he wants to keep on, on the right side of Southern privileged information. Um, JPWHU TV says, because it's talk sport when they're reacting to the ball, it's giving them free advertising thereafter. And Jack Dooley says, because he loves uh, to defend their ball and try and make our fans look ungrateful uh, with this made up Sufel um, nonsense. And Chaz Wazza, the most simplest comment of them all, simply says, Simple answer, he's a twat. So, that was question number one. That was quite a good one, that one. I, I enjoyed that one. So let's have a look to see how we got on with question number two. Question number two, is West Ham's form, now this is a big topic as well, because this is what the Moose said earlier. Is West Ham's form this season down to their not being fans in the stadiums? And I'll put at the bottom, honest answer and explain why you think that. Oh, now, no, <laughs> it's a simple answer to this. It, it's not. I mean, there's going to be deviations of results because of fans not being there. Is it specifically because West Ham fans ain't there? No, no, not at all. Is it because, you, you know, you look at our form at the London Stadium, for instance, it's pretty averaged out with how it's been in every other season at the London Stadium. It hasn't been fantastic. It looks like a problem with the ground. But away performances have been a bit better. Now, is that because West Ham fans are getting on their back away? No, it's because of a lack of home crowds. And, and every team, you see it across the league. If you see it across the league, away teams are having a better go at, at Premier League teams because there's no crowd influence. There's no crowd, sorry, there's no intimidation factor. Now, to turn around and say West Ham are doing better because there ain't no crowds there, all right, do you know what? Even if that was true, even if it's true, people in the crowd pay their money. They are entitled to go there, to boo, to cheer, to do whatever they like. It's their opinion. Um, and if they don't think they're getting value for their money, uh, if they don't think their money that is being pumped into the club is being spent right, they have the right, the right, as a consumer, to make their feelings heard. And at football games, that's by booing, that's by cheering, that's by protesting, whatever. Um, I don't feel we've had what we've promised delivered to us. So, you know, if we play terribly, 
there's going to be booze. There's booze at Upton Park. Um, there's booze at Man City. There's booze at Man United. There's booze everywhere. Like to just pinpoint West Ham and say, oh, that's why they're doing better. What about Sheffield United? What they're doing worse because there ain't fans in the stadium. Are Leeds average because there ain't fans in the stadium? It's the same for everybody. I don't think that, like, uh, and apart from Burnley a couple of years ago, which was absolutely self-destructing anyway um, in that game, um, there has been no protests in the ground. There has been no satis disfatis dissatisfaction towards the team um, in the crowd. It's all been directed towards the ball. Does it distract them? I don't think so. And if it does, it shouldn't. Um, and I read out a tweet the other day saying we're fully behind the boys. We always are, you know. But the, my, my, my point of this, if they think they're better off without us, right? If they think they're better off without us, stop taking their money. Stop taking their money. Simple as that, because, you know, it's, it's, it's catch-22. If they think they're better off without us, well, the door shut, don't let us in anymore. If that's the benefit of the football club, then that's what it is, you know? But they want the money, so it's catch-22 for them, it's catch-22 for us. It's just a bit like, you know, you don't like the way the club's being run, but we still put more money in. Catch-22, both ways, but I don't like West Ham fans getting banned, uh, um, belted like this. So let's have a look at the uh, comments to this one. Um, there's a mixed comment to this one. Bob GSB says, uh, I believe the lack of fans has helped us at home and away for the same reason. When the pressure is on in the game, there's less moans and groans, which helps at home. But when it's, when we've won away, the home teams have suffered without the support, which we have at times. So maybe, and that was a long one. Um, Mark Sherman Brown, the good form is down to the hard work of Moyes and his team. Absolutely. Imagine the tremendous support. That's what I, I don't like about this, all this like talk about the fans. It's always about the fans. It's always about what the fans do, what the fans bring out, how the fans are disturbing everyone. You, I think you detract away from the hard work that the, the, the manager and the players are giving. Imagine the tremendous support the team would be given if fans were allowed in. The fans are honest on the whole. Criticise when not going well, which is their right, but when going well, their support is magnificent. Uh, Jack says, at the start of the season, yes, but the stadium would be bouncing now. Finn uh, Hammer says partly after that Newcastle result the atmosphere would have been negative and toxic to the point we may have affected performances I don't agree with that I don't agree with that however our first two home games in 15-16 were both losses and that didn't seem to affect the atmosphere nor the performance of the team it's tough uh, Gavin O'Flynn says I think it's naive to think that's the only reason but it's certainly a contributing factor yes maybe they don't feel the pressure or hear groans so they think we'll have time to, to get something um, okay I feel like not having the pressure of fans there when the team is on top of the back foot or falling to take the chances is again to make the heads drop. As we've seen, we can see their heads drop down. And what, what about their last season at the Bowling? What about that one? We lost them first two home games. Why weren't they feeling the pressure then? Strange. Strange how it, 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 it all coincides with the move and the promises and the liars and, and all of that sort of stuff. It's... it's it's really weird the way it does it. Maybe that might be down to the chairman and not to the fans. Uh, AJ Fox says, don't think so really. Moyes finally being able to put his stamp on the side, get rid of Deadwood and keeping the players. Um, that put a shift in as well as keeping them grounded and working together. Seems to be the team bond is really strong too. Uh, Warwick Betts says, everyone can have theories, but we would never know. We could have lost games we won. We could have all got, also got something out of games we lost once again. It's just a talking point for the media. All I can say for sure is most, most fans miss that match day experience, win, lose or draw. Amen to that, my friend. Um, uh, Mark Le Monsieur, I, 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 I pronounce that right, um, says something very similar. No one will ever know, but I do think even slightly that having no pressure from the fans has helped. Who knows? Drawing nil-nil with Sheffield United after 40 minutes in the packed stadium and hearing the moans and groans, it may have affected the players. Um... Steve Smith says at the start, yes, now no, now, no the backing of the team will, will now be off the scale. Orwell says, no, the team are just better. Uh, Den V says, I do think it's played a part. We have been quite defensive in a few games when the fans may, expe may be expecting us to be a bit more attacking. And JP says, a small amount, but mostly down to improved backroom staff and training. Right, thank you so much, guys, for getting involved. Question three, third and final. Um, I don't know if you saw this today. The Premier League today announced that live games would be shown, it was expected to be honest, will be shown up until the government guidelines permit fans back in the ground. Now, my question to you was, should this be the catalyst 
to reform the way games are shown? Um, or are you for the old way coming back? So the old way being no Saturday games at 3 p.m. because we want people to flood back to the stadiums. Or are we living in a new age? Now, I firmly believe we are living in a new age. Um, there can only be 60,000 fans inside that stadium at any one time. We've got a million fans across the globe. You know, why should they have to wait until fucking Gary Lineker starts showing them the highlights of it? They shouldn't. There's streaming services available now, illegal ones at that. Um, they're going to be battling them for years and years and years. They'll never win the battle because the minute they shut one down, then another 10. We're living in a digital wage now. We need to get with the times. Back in 1992, when these when these sort of rules were sort of to favour Sky, you know, were bought out. Um, they wanted the fans to still go to the stadiums because the new fad of TV and all that. People can watch TV on their phones now if they want. They can get an illegal stream up while they're going shopping in Asda's with their missus. They don't have to be at the stadiums anymore. They don't have to be at the grounds anymore. They don't have to be at home even watching on the TV. What they do need to be doing um, is, what they don't need to be doing is watching the football. They're watching it regardless. They're watching it regardless. It is time to reform this dinosaur age of digital and analog TV because analog TV is dead. We're in a digital age. You can access. You can even access it via watches now. You can watch it anywhere. Why you're shopping at Asda's? Why you're on holiday? Why you you know mucking out the horses in the stable? Why you're picking up shit out in the garden? You can still watch the football. We've all done it. We've all sat there with our phones watching it um, illegally, unfortunately, because. You know, the Premier League wouldn't get with the times. Now, this pandemic has driven the conversation towards this because they tried to charge us at first and fans were like, I don't think so, pal. You're not charging us for this. And we rejected it. Now they started showing them. Bring out a subscription model. This is why I want Amazon to get it so badly. It'll be a price and that will be it. You will be able to watch it all on there. At the moment, the way it is, like... Just watching football at the moment with lockdown and stuff, you have to have, to have a BT um, internet subscription, you have to have a Sky subscription, um, you watch FA Cup games, you've got to have a fucking TV license, which you know we all have, by the way. Um, but I'm just saying, like, there's so many different channels. Just get with the time, man. Just make it a streaming service. Just make it a Netflix sports service. Charge us, uh, you know, a price, whether it be like 19 99 a month. Just let people watch it because it doesn't affect people going to the stadiums. We've, we've, we've had this Premier League now for, for, what is it? 29 years, nearly 30 years. People haven't stopped going to football grounds unless they wanted to stop going to football grounds. It isn't because they can't watch it on a telly or they can watch it on a telly. We need to get with the ages, man. We need to let people watch football. Um, let's take your comments. Uh, Bob says, once we can go back, I think it should be should go back to how it was. I don't believe it will, though. The way football was will never return, in my opinion. In the league, like, they stack fixtures like now. I don't like that. I like fixtures being played at the same time. Um, I like Saturday 3 pm kickoffs. You don't get many, even in normal seasons, but you don't get many nowadays. Six o'clock kickoffs kill me. Um, they've well and truly got what they have wanted. Um, always wanted now and I don't think they'll go back too much money is made in advertising Bob, I do agree with you in a way but it wasn't the advertising that was after they thought this was going to give them a little bit more uh, moolah in their pockets they thought oh, we're going to charge these mugs for Burnley versus Fulham on a 6 o'clock on a Wednesday evening and the fans were like I don't think so we're not buying that and then people started donating forced uh, a huge corporation to back turn a subscription service. A subscription service would outweigh the model that they've got now. It would, it would far. It would. They don't need the money from Sky. You know, a subscription model like Netflix or something like that would generate so much more money. It's ridiculous how much money it would. It would. It, it's. It's. Yeah, I think it's inevitable now. I think this has just accelerated it. Uh, Mark Sherman Brown says, I do like Saturday 3 pm. I am old school, but I'll go any time to support my team. I love watching football at the moment. It's keeping me relatively sane. I can't wait for the next day. There won't be midweek, midweek six o'clock games, that's for sure. That's for sure, because of people like coming from work and stuff like that. Gavin Flynn says, I'm 100% in favour of this. Living in Ireland, rarely I can go watch a game because we aren't considered one of the top six, uh, unless we're playing on one of the top six. 
how games somehow affects them more and it's not on the telly. I feel this is by the uh, is the least they can do to try and keep more people at home. Uh, says in ninety seven. I'm just gonna call him ninety seven. He's got that's what his name is. Uh, by showing every game, it will give people who aren't fans of football a chance to experience and watch every team. Finn Hammer says this shouldn't happen. This should happen anyways. This is the whole the people sport narrative. Uh, can't happen if people can't afford the tickets to see the games. Uh, you only get a season ticket for the premium stadium experience firsthand, not just watch the games. Uh, JP says, uh, completely bring on the Amazon season tickets so we can watch any game we want in, uh, and revenue still goes to the club as it's part of the international TV deal. Jeff Williams says, I think it's the, the costs of EPL games make it out of reach for many people. Even lower leagues are not cheap. I'm sure, uh, not sure that many true fans would stay at home and watch Man United versus Fulham if they were Wickham fans and could go there. I hope three o'clock kickoffs are no longer off limits. Uh, too early to say, says Walthog. Uh, would like to see the attendance data before committing, but love the fact that my kids uh, all watch the games with me and are loving it. Um, Steve Smith says, I can see it staying. Spain do exactly the same thing. No La Liga games uh, clash on a weekend. Uh, I'm going to have to take one more because it's... You know, we're, we're getting on with this video a little bit. I would love the 3 p.m. games as a blackout period. We'll be back. Oh, uh, Ryan, Ryan, West Ham 84 says, I would remove the 3 p.m. game as the blackout period. We'll be back. There should be a choice to watch every game. Uh, anyway, 10 different kickoff slots. And there you go. And that is Musings. Once again, thank you so much to Final Runner for sponsoring this video. Um, as I said, go and check them out. Any clicks you do, any times you enter, you'll be competing against us and, and the guys over at Amish Chat. Um, anything you do like that always supports this channel uh, you can check out our merchandise you can see our lovely old father t-shirt right here uh, in the, and that will be in the link in the description down below as well once again guys thank you so much uh, for joining us on this video we're coming back next week to do this I loved it so much I, I, I love interacting with the Twitter guys I love interacting on Friday Night Pint and you can check that out uh, on Friday uh, in the build up to the Spurs game I'm trying to get a good chat with my friend Expressions um, I'm communicating with him now to see if we can get something done before Sunday. But other than that, thank you so much for watching, guys. One thing left to say, come on, you irons.